the Canon EOS M versus the Sony NEX 5R. They're both mirrorless cameras of about the same age, but which one's the better buy overall? Let's go find out. So if you watch my channel, you know that I love the Sony NEX cameras. For their price point, they record amazing quality video, and I've kind of crowned them as like the best budget video camera for like around the $100 mark. But recently I picked up the Canon EOS M, and it's here to possibly steal the crown from the NEX cameras as the best budget video camera for around that $100 mark. So I threw on about the same focal length lens on both of these cameras, and I set them both to 1080p at 24 frames a second, and went out to find out which one's the better video shooter and I got a bunch of test footage with them, and I'm gonna show that in a minute. But first, I'm gonna go over a little bit of a pros and cons list of each of these cameras, and which one does what things better. So let's go over that first, and then I'm gonna show you guys the test footage, and then we'll figure out which one's the best buy for that $100 to $150 price point. Sorry to interrupt, but if you could go down and like this video and subscribe to my channel, it'd be much appreciated. I put a lot of time and effort into these videos, and it'd really help me out if you went and did that. So go like this video, and then let's get right back into it. So right off the bat, the main advantage of the Canon EOS M is the microphone input as well as the hot shoe mount on top. So you can go right in and plug in your microphone like a Rode Video Micro or a Rode Video Mic Pro or anything like that, mount it right on top of the camera and get some awesome audio quality out of this. But over on the NEX 5R, there's no microphone input and there's also not a hot shoe mount on top of the camera. So this is a big downfall because the audio quality with the built-in mics is pretty bad and you can't plug in any sort of microphone into this. So you're really stuck with using an external microphone or using your phone to record audio or something along those lines, which really sucks. And I've already stated in my review of the NEX cameras that it's a big downside to these cameras and really something you'll just have to problem solve with and find out the best way to record audio and just sync it up in post. But yeah, that's the first big advantage of the EOS M versus the 5R is the microphone input jack and the hot shoe mount on top. So next up with the EOS M, is the touch screen. So you can use the touch screen on the EOS M for going through the menu and choosing options. You can use it for autofocus tracking on the screen. You can use it for changing all your different settings like ISO and shutter speed. And it's super responsive and just super useful and nice just to use the touch screen to sort through everything almost like a smartphone. But over on the NEX 5R, it does have a touch screen, but there's barely any functionality with it. You can't scroll through the menu with it and it really doesn't feel that responsive. It's kind of squishy almost. It's just not responsive at all compared to the EOS M, which you can change all the settings with. They really do almost everything with the touchscreen on this. So that's the big plus of the EOS M. The touchscreen is awesome, super responsive, and it makes going through settings and changing certain things super fast and easy compared to the Sony NEX 5R. All right, and the last big plus of the EOS M is actually the bitrate that it records at. So this camera records 1080p at 24 frames a second at 45 megabits per second, while the NEX 5R records 1080p 24 frames a second at only 24 megabits per second. So this shoots almost double the data rate, which is really good for color grading. And when you're pushing the exposures and saturation and stuff, this will hold up a lot better than this will. Now when it comes to real life shooting with a different bitrate, there's not a huge difference that you can noticeably see right away. They're pretty close when it comes to what they actually look like with the footage. They're both really good for 1080p, but this will have a higher data rate, so if you're really pushing your color grades, the EOS M footage should hold up better than the Sony NEX 5R will. All right, so now moving on to the advantages of the NEX 5R over the EOS M. First things first, it has a tilting screen. I didn't think this was gonna be a big deal at first, but it really is. Being able to tilt the screen up and even angle it down for all different positions, it's super handy and super nice. And I really felt like a big downfall of not having it on the EOS M. While I was recording a lot of that footage, I was getting low angles and kind of holding it down by my waist, and you just could not see the screen of the EOS M at all when you're holding it at that angle. With the NEX 5R, you could just tilt it right up like this, or even tilt it around for selfie mode. Up and down is super nice and super handy for getting those low shots or even up high shots. When the EOS M, it's just a fixed screen, and at different angles, it's really hard to see your focus and your settings. And especially if you're holding out in front of you and vlogging, you're not gonna be able to see anything at all. All right, so next up, if you're using any vintage lenses or you just like using manual focus, 
the NEX5R has focus peaking. And that is super handy and super awesome for when you're manually focusing because on a, such a small screen like this, it's sometimes kind of hard to see what's exactly in focus. But with focus peaking, you'll always know and it'll always just highlight what's in focus so you always know what's in focus and make sure you get the shot that you need. Now the Canon EOS M does not have focus peaking and when I was manually focusing with it, it was really tough, especially if I was holding it at a low angle, you already can barely see the screen and then trying to focus along with it on the small screen like this it's just super tough and it's really hard to nail your focus right. All right, so last but not least, biggest advantage of the NEX cameras is the lens mount. Sony's E-mount has so many lenses available. You can always find whatever lens you're looking for at whatever price point you need. But the Canon EOS M has barely any native lenses. So you're gonna have to get an adapter to EF lenses or for vintage lenses. And then the autofocus isn't gonna be as good when you adapt stuff like that. And there's just not that many lens options for this unless you want to go with like vintage old lenses. So that really wraps up the pros and cons of each of these cameras. So the last thing I'm going to bring up is Magic Lantern for the EOS M. So a lot of people have been talking about it recently. It's actually driven the prices up for this camera because of it. And that's the ability to shoot raw video with Magic Lantern. And I didn't go over that at all because I downloaded it, I played around with it a little bit but I didn't feel comfortable giving advice about it because I don't know that much about it. I didn't want to give false advice or any false information about Magic Lantern. So I'm just gonna say, Magic Lantern is awesome. You can shoot raw video. And if you know what you're doing, you can get some amazing footage out of this, but I'm not gonna say anything about it because I'm not that much of an expert with it. And I don't know much about Magic Lantern. So I'm gonna go ahead and link Zeke's channel in the description. If you don't know who he is, he's an expert when it comes to EOS M and Magic Lantern and shooting raw video and everything about it. So go check out his channel if you're interested in using Magic Lantern with this camera and you wanna learn more about it or see what it is, go check out his channel. He's an expert when it comes to that. I'm not gonna go into that because I'm just gonna look at these cameras as in how they were out of the box and just how they look right away without downloading Magic Lantern and shooting raw video. But now let's get right into the test footage with these two cameras and then we'll have a final verdict of which one I would recommend. So there we go. That is the test footage with these. They're both gonna be great cameras if you wanna start out with filmmaking. They both shoot sharp video at 1080p, 24 frames a second. But there is a couple differences in the video quality itself. So the first things I noticed is that the sharpness is pretty much about the same. Especially if they're not side by side, you're really not gonna notice the difference in sharpness. So that's pretty much a wash between the two. But then when it comes to low light, I pushed up the ISO quite a bit and then I ended up bumping it all the way up to 6400 which is the highest the EOS M goes and then also 6400 on this but it actually goes up to 12,000 but I just brought this one to 6400 to match the EOS M and it looks like the EOS M had cleaner footage at 6400 ISO. Now they were both terrible like they're both unusable at that amount but the EOS M had a little bit less grain it looked like and it just looked a little bit cleaner than the NEX5R at 6400 ISO. Now I would not at all recommend shooting at 6400 ISO. Um, there's actually quite a bit of grain even at lower ISOs like that. So I would recommend trying to stay at one to 200 ISO on both of these cameras if you don't want any noise or grain in your image. But overall, I think the EOS M performed a little better at that high ISO. But again, they're both like pretty much unusable at that point. 
Another thing I noticed is that the EOS M has a lot warmer footage, and that's mainly due to Canon's color science. They really have a lot warmer, more natural colors, and it really seemed kind of nice. I really liked the Canon's colors, but that's really up to you of which color science you like better. But the Canon, I'd say, has a little bit better colors overall than the Sony NX5R. And besides that, both of the footage is pretty much the same. I mean, you can really make up your mind yourself of which one you think looks better, but they're both really good quality for 1080p and they're both gonna be just fine for filmmaking or for YouTube videos or anything like that, as long as it's not in super low light. So now let's get into the final verdict. Which one would I recommend in 2019 going on to 2020? And I would choose the Sony NEX 5R. Basically, the main reasons I would choose this is because of the tilty screen, and because of the lens mount. Those are the two biggest things that I think they, Sony does a lot better than the Canon. So yeah, I'd go ahead and get the NEX 5R if you're looking between the two. But again, the EOS M is still a great, fantastic camera. And if you wanna get it to shoot raw video or use Magic Lantern, then go for it. They're both really cheap. If anything, you can just buy both. I mean, they're both awesome cameras, but I would definitely recommend the NEX 5R overall as a run and gun filming camera or a YouTube camera. So there you go, that wraps up this video. Make sure you stay tuned for more videos like this in the future and check out my other videos about the NEX 5R as well as Zeke's channel in the description below. But besides that, that's about all I have for you today. So stay tuned and make sure you subscribe and like this video and I'll see you guys in the next one.